Hello, world folks. It's good to see you all here again. This is your regular dose of world news and analysis. Before I move on to any further details, I'd really love to thank you all for enormous love and support. And in case you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for, guys? Hit that subscribe button now, and don't forget to press that bell icon. The Queen wanted both of her grandsons to join the military, but felt that only Harry should be permitted to fight, according to General Sir Mike Jackson. Queen Elizabeth reportedly deemed the risk of being killed in battle as acceptable for Prince Harry, but too great for his older brother William. The late monarch's assessment of the value of the lives of the heir to the heir and the spare are revealed in the ITV series The Real Crown, which promises to be the jewel of the crown in the streaming platform's latest season. The former head of the army, Sir Mike Jackson, lifts the lid on the issue by talking about one of his private audiences with Elizabeth. He reveals that the Queen told him of the need for both princes to serve in the forces, but only Harry should be sent to war. She told me our grandsons have taken my shilling and therefore must do their duty. But it was decided that William, as heir to the heir, was the risk too great. But for his younger brother, the risk was acceptable, he said. The retired general explained that he had a meeting with the Queen once or twice a year, faced rigorous grilling, but was unwritten rule that what was said remained between them. However, before making his revelation about her view on Harry's expendability in comparison to his older brother, he said, I'll break the rule by revealing what went on in this one occasion, when she was very clear. The Real Crown is a far-part series that probes the facts behind many of the events chronicled in the hit Netflix dramatization, such as Buckingham Palace Intruder, Michael Fagan, and the IRA murder of Lord Mountbatten. It confirms how a clandestine meeting in South London House has paved the way for Camilla to finally marry Charles, and relates how the now-disgraced Prince Andrew insisted, carting a six-foot ironing board around the globe while consistently going off script and refusing to carry out duties as taxpayer-funded trade envoy. Executive producer Dave Grover said it's a family where succession is known and there are issues with that. So even though the Queen was keen that both her grandsons should be sent to war because they've been taking the same shilling that every other soldier takes, there's a difference between the heir and the spare. Prince Harry, 38, served in the army for a decade and went on two tours of Afghanistan, rising to the rank of captain. His brother completed seven years of military training and rose to the rank of lieutenant in the household cavalry, blues and royals. Following the attachments to the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy, he trained as a search and rescue pilot and was stationed at the RAF Valley Anglesey in September 2010. The program also hears from former Archbishop of Canterbury, George Carey, who tells how he met Camilla and his son Andrew Humble House in Packingham after the relationship, when Charles went public in January 1999. The Archbishop had warned the couple that marrying would cause a crisis for the church, but changed his mind during the get-together. Dr. Carrier called. She walked through the front door and we had coffee together. I was really struck by her. She was a very nice looking lady, very presentable, very intelligent. We had an animated conversation, talked about her relationship with Charles going way back when we were teenagers. And after that, I decided there's no way I could treat her as anything other than a really nice human being who's deeply in love with Charles. That affected me in talking to people about the behind the scenes. I hope I had a way forward. I think I did. The Royal Crown promises to provide viewers with an inside story of the world's most famous family. The series can be streamed on ITVX from April 20th. So what do you guys think about this news? What impact do you think the Queen's differential treatment of Prince Harry and William had on their relationship? Write it in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. Until then, I guess we'll just have to wait and see if things turn out to be something after all. Also, if you never want to miss any of my Sizzling World updates like this, subscribe and press that bell icon. It's as simple as that. So until next time, hasta la vista.